Bali police called child kidnapping issues a hoax. And Bali's governor is planning on running for a second term. Stay tuned for details. Selamat siang. Welcome to the latest news from Bali and Indonesia. This is February 8th, 2023, and my name is Bruce. And what is the weather like today? Oh, it is not good. Last night we had a huge, huge storm here. It just suddenly came up and rain and wind. Wow, it was something. Right now it is 29 degrees Celsius. The humidity is 74%. Wind speed is 4.5 kilometers per hour. And according to my app, that 29 degrees Celsius feels like 36. And it is muggy today. Yuck. And very overcast, really overcast. I can't even see the edge of the sea out there. It's just, just not there. So not the best of days, unfortunately. Hoping for some better weather soon. And I'm sure you all know about the massive earthquake in Turkey and the rising number of deaths in Turkey and Syria. For all my friends in Turkey and Syria, I hope that you get through this and I hope help comes soon. Indonesia is planning on sending help as are many other countries. So my thoughts are with all of you. Okay, let's hit it. And move on. Bali police call child kidnapping issues a hoax. Urge schools to install CCTV. Even though the Bali police say that the kidnapping issues a hoax, they are urging parents to supervise children's activities when they're outside the home. Parents are also asked not to put flashy items or jewelry on their children. Not only that, but the head of public relations for the Bali police said that it is better to install CCTVs in children's play areas. This needs to be done so that criminals can be monitored, he said. He added, we really hope for, especially for schools where children can be picked up by CCTV to anticipate things that are not desirable. As you may or may not have heard, the issue of child abduction has spread in Bali. This is evident in at least two areas, Denpasar and in Karangasam. Pak Bayu from the police said that the spread of child kidnapping hoaxes was being detected by intelligence and also members of the police in charge of the areas. On the one hand, police are trying to find out whether there are actually cases of the alleged ki child kidnapping or not. Pak Bayu said, we will also conduct an investigation regarding the existence of information or the issue of the kidnapping. Yes, we will certainly carry out an investigation, including finding the disseminator of the information. He said that he suspects that the hoaxes about the child kidnappings are being spread because elections are approaching, still a, about a year away, and that it's spread by irresponsible people in order to make the atmosphere hot. However, he said the situation in Bali is safe and conducive and he appealed to the public to filter out their information first before sharing it with others. Apparently there are other cases of kidnapping around the country that have been in the news recently, but on other islands. He said people should not be worried and carry out activities as usual, but people that have children should remain vigilant. And we get these hoaxes far too often, unfortunately. People targeting children for some reason. But good news that the kidnappings are not real. If you have children though, keep an eye on them. What about Governor Koster? Governor Koster seeks a second term. He said five years is not enough to build Bali. The governor is confident that his leadership will continue on for a second term. He's determined to run again, even though this has not been discussed publicly by his supporting party, the PDIP. However, in other stories coming out now, leaders of the PDIP and the different regencies in Bali are already voicing their support for the governor to be the candidate for a second term. The governor said, yes, it's not discussed yet by the PDIP, but it's normal for two terms to be given an opportunity, he said. According to him, a number of development programs in Bali that are currently running have not been sufficiently carried out within the five years of his leadership, and he hinted that it would take a second five years to finish 
the construction of all the massive projects that he's got going on and planned to do, one of which is not the airport. Governor Koster also plans on keeping his deputy with him for a second term, and his deputy expressed his support for the governor and said it's important for him to be reelected in order for him to carry out all these plans that he has to do to move Bali into the new era. So the election is next year, 2024, and I would guess that we are going to see the governor get a second term. And what about some health news? In the future, provincial, regency, city-level hospitals throughout Bali can provide cancer services. Good news. A memorandum of understanding has been signed between the Indonesian Ministry of Health and the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. This will address cancer problems in Indonesia. Representatives from the University of Texas, the Ministry of Health, and Dharma's Hospital, that's in Jakarta, visited Bali Mandara Hospital and the Professor Dr. Nurai Hospital, Nura Hospital in Dempasar on Monday. According to the main director of Dharma's Hospital, by signing the MOU with the Ministry of Health, Dharma's Hospital as the implementing unit will follow up on this collaboration. Not only that, we will disseminate to the MD Anderson Cancer Center how the cancer service system will be in the future. In Bali, the Professor Nura Hospital, which used to be Sangla Hospital, used to be called Sangla Hospital, is the vertical hospital, but there are also provincial hospitals such as Bali Mandara and hospitals in other regencies and cities that are going to be able to provide cancer services. The main director of Dharma's Hospital said that the Ministry of Health hopes that not only cancer services, but ob services, pediatric services, heart, stroke, kidney services will all be provided in all hospitals in Bali. This is, he said, so that people can get access quickly and more easily, just like in hospitals in big cities. And this has been a problem in the past when people have had issues like cancer and had to go to Surabaya or Jakarta. Very hard financially and emotionally because uh, if you know anything about people in hospitals here, it's not just the person, it's the whole family. When I was in with dengue fever, I had kids in and my wife in and brother-in-laws and sister-in-laws and people camp out at the hospitals and they bring pillows and their ghoulings and everything else. It is a family affair and so if you have to leave the island, that is especially a hardship. So if we can get access to all these services in Bali, that would be great. Cancer in Indonesia is almost the same as in Asia and perhaps in the world. Breast cancer and cervical cancer are the most common for women. And for men, the biggest is lung cancer. According to Dr. Soku, the most important thing for the community is not to hesitate to carry out early detection or examination because the earlier the treatment, the easier, cheaper, and higher the success rate will be. Cancer in Indonesia is rapidly increasing and it is in the top three causes of death here. With the collaboration between the Ministry of Health and the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center, it's hoped that cancer patients can rely more on their healing treatment at 144 Indonesian government hospitals, especially the Dharmas Cancer Hospital in Java. And this has been in the news <laughs> a lot recently, and I guess it's because this person, Vero Brahmasta, I, he's an artist, I guess he's famous. He got Bali Belly here, and so this has been in the news a lot, the local news. After vacationing in Bali, many tourists are affected by Bali Belly disease. See the explanation. So, <laughs> they are, so this artist, I said, um, Vero Brahmasta, and I don't know who he is, but apparently he's very well known in Indonesia, he got sick. So according to this article, it's not only tourists that are attacked, foreign tourists, but also Indonesians as well. And Viral had to be hospitalized for his Bali Belly. Bali Belly in general often attacks tourists who are on holiday in Bali. General symptoms, of course, diarrhea, fever, vomiting, cramps. It is terrible. I've had Bali Belly several times 
over the years and it is not pleasant. If you've had it, you know exactly what I mean. According to the head of Bali Provincial Health Office, Nyoman Gede Anom, who I've talked about many times, he said there's no data on cases reported in Bali on Bali Belly. He said people who have Bali Belly usually seek immediate treatment and it's not fatal. According to Dr. Anam, it's common for Bali Belly to occur to tourists who often buy or try food on the side of the road. Street food, right? And that's how I got my first case of Bali Belly eating street food. Dr. Anam said, because Bali Belly is related to the consumption of food that's been contaminated with viruses or bacteria, he appeals to the public, to the tourists who are on vacation in Bali, to be careful when buying and consuming food on the side of the road and pay attention to whether the food is closed, there's no flies, it's not stale. Buy food that's fresh or just finished cooking. And when I got here back in the old days, big thing was ice, of course. An American, I like ice in my drinks and well, ice was always suspect back in those days, so you had to be careful. And of course, people worried about salads as well. Dr. Anam said that for food traders, they need to maintain cleanliness and processing food and always cover their food displayed on the table so flies are not infesting it. And in general, wash your hands diligently before eating something. Always apply clean and healthy living habits and if you feel uncomfortable in your stomach, such as nausea, vomiting, immediately seek treatment. And now on to tourism. San Diego Uno says Borbador entry fee at rupiah 100,000 for local tourists. Now, this headline seems a little misleading to me and listen and you'll see why. Tourism and Creative Economy Minister San Diego Uno announced that the trial run of the hike of entrance fees at Borbador for educational and conservation groups has been completed. The entry fee for foreign tourists was planned to be set at rupiah 500,000 and for locals at 100,000. Santiago said the ticket price, however, will be determined by PT Taman with Sata Chandi as the site management. We fully hand it over to TWC to launch educational and conservation tour packages to the public. So, it doesn't seem like the fee is set yet. Pak Santiago said the ticket price will be determined by them. So, I'm not sure what the ticket price is. The tourism minister said that all trial processes had been ended and information had been handed over to PTTWC. The government and management agreed that Borbador Temple should be open to the public. San Diego said that the final trial phase had been carried out on Sunday, February 5th, just the other day, with the visit of ASEAN Tourism Forum 2023 delegates. So, is the fee 100,000 for locals and 500,000 for foreigners? I don't know. Has anybody been there recently? Do you have plans to go there? If anybody knows what the price actually is, please leave a comment below. And here is something that's going to be fairly controversial. Indonesian work ethics quality lower than other nations. Whoa. So he is the Indonesian investment minister. And he assessed that at present, local workers could not be relied on to work in international standard companies or those with foreign capital. This is self-criticism for us, he said, members of the DPR. Together, not to blame each other, but instead we have to be able to socialize our work ethic. Is he saying that the work ethic of the DPR is superior and that they should socialize that to everybody else in the country? I've seen videos of the DPR. Interesting work ethic. The minister said that the work ethic and quality of local workers were still unable to compete and be relied upon to steadily pursue the productivity of a company. He continued, I'm sorry, I'm a former entrepreneur. We, on average, not all, in some areas have a 30 minute prayer break, an additional 15 minutes for a meal, so let's say it's 40 minutes. Let's say we try some math and say it's 45 minutes. But smoking and gossiping may take two hours and then working. This is self-criticism for us. I don't mean to blame anyone, but this is our homework. We may have demands, but we must also know our obligations. He emphasized that many companies invested their money in high tech and not in hiring workers. He said, on the one hand, companies need creativity. On the other hand, we need a large number of domestic workers. If productivity is not boosted, how can we achieve this? 
He concluded, I must admit that investment growth reaching over 30% is not directly proportional to the growth and employment opportunities. So I wonder how Indonesian workers are going to respond to that. And I am going to stay away from this one, only to say I've had a lot of people working for me while I've been here. Some have been really good, some haven't. When I lived in America, I had really good workers and some that not quite so good. We'll see if there's any pushback on this one. And some more tourism. Entering the top five contributors to foreign tourist visits to Bali, this is the step of the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy and the Indonesian Embassy in New Delhi. The Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy, in collaboration with the Indonesian Embassy in New Delhi, is participating in South Asia Travel and Tourism Exchange that will take place on the 9th to the 11th of this month in New Delhi. Indonesia's participation in this is based on trying to find more tourists from the South Asia region, especially Indians. Pak Sandiaga explained that the number of post-pandemic visits by Indian tourists is again showing a positive trend. This is because India is included in the top five countries coming into Indonesia and second in Bali after just Australians. Where do the Russians go? For our international promotion strategy, we are focusing on our main tourism market, including India with an extraordinary growth in foreign tourist arrivals to Indonesia. Five super priority tourism destinations are going to be pushed. Borobudur, Lake Toba, Mandalika, Labuan Bajo, and Likupang, along with Bali, a favorite for Indian tourists. In the exhibition, the ministry will be highlighting four segments for the Indian market, weddings, honeymoon, family, and mice. Those have been the leading segments for the Indian tourism market. Additionally, Indonesia is trying to bring in luxury tourists from India. So the luxury zone, and this will be filled with seven industry players consisting of hotels, resorts, and villas that offer luxury products equipped with <laughs> unique and authentic experiences. And so we've got a lot of Indians coming in. Surprising. Well, I, I haven't seen any up here, but you know, we don't get that many tourists up around my house. And one more segment, and this is a good one. I know that there are people that watch this channel that like Pamutaran. This is about Pamutaran. The only Bali representative of Pamutaran Tourism Village wins 2023 ASEAN Level Award. So Pamutaran Village succeeded in being the only representative from Bali who won the ASEAN Tourism Standard Award for Community-Based Tourism, CBT. There were four other villages representing Indonesia who were also winners, but only one from Bali, and that's Pamutran. The head of the Buleng Tourism Office, Pagodi, said that community-based tourism is a group of people who do tourism not only looking at profit, but they also focus on the sustainability of the environment, social, and culture itself. CBT is also considered as a scheme for local community activities through communities that have a role in the tourism sector, starting from planning and budgeting for the tourism destination areas to making plans that will be carried out in the next five years. The four other villages that won the award, Y Rebo Tourism Village in NTT, Important Tansare in Jogjakarta, Silokek in West Sumatra, and Tamansari Tourism Village in East Java. Bakdodi said, in this program, people are not only spectators, but also tourism actors and business owners. Bakdodi said that Pamutran deserved the award because it's a tourist destination with the concept of sea and hill ecotourism, including cultural attractions, which are the main attractions in Pamutran. So Pamutran is being pushed as a pilot model with the development of CBT-based ecotourism, which is then targeted to become an object of imitated studies for other villages in Bulaleng. And according to the chair of the Sagaragiri Tourism Awareness Group in Pamutran, he said that this award is the result of hard work supported by community groups. And what was the work that they were doing? Conserving coral reefs in a sustainable manner, cleaning the environment every Friday, and handling garbage that involved all official and customary village communities. Additionally, creating new tourist destinations. So there are more places for tourists to visit when they come to Pamutaran. And I am going to get back there someday, someday, someday. And that is it for today. 
it is getting windier and windier and I think it's going to rain again tonight. I think it's about time to put down my storm tarp and get ready to batten the hatches. Thanks for viewing. Be kind to someone today. Stay safe and I'll see you next time.